In this video I'm going to show you how you can assemble my buck converter kit set, demonstrate some of its features and put it through its paces to see how good it is. In the box you'll receive a printed circuit board and anti-static bags filled to the brim with electronic goodies. To make assembly as easy as possible there are no surface mount components to be found anywhere on the board. What's more the component values are printed right on the board which means there are no need to look up field reference values to identify what component goes where. At the heart of the buck converter is the XL4016 buck IC which has a decent set of safety features including over temperature thermal shutdown, over current cutoff, output short protection and input over voltage protection. The buck converter features constant voltage and constant current capabilities. Constant voltage means that the output voltage is stable even if the input voltage fluctuates. Even if the voltage fluctuations are caused by a really annoying caveman fiddling Ooh. with things he really shouldn't be touching. Ah. <laughs> and the constant current feature allows the user to program the maximum output current. With this feature you can safely dead short the output leads together without any risk of damaging the buck converter. Not only is this great for short circuit protection but also very useful for driving LEDs and so on. There are two indicator LEDs which let the user know what mode the buck converter is in, whether it is in constant voltage or constant current mode. The buck converter has a wide input voltage range of 8 to 38 volts DC and an output voltage range of 2 to 36 volts DC and can output up to 8 amps of current. Check out the product page for more detailed specs if you're interested. And I'm sure you'll be happy to know that every single kit set is assembled right here in New Zealand, in fact in my workshop. I buy all the components in bulk from overseas, get them sent in, I arrange them into individual kit sets Put them in a box with a printed circuit board from who other than JLC BCV. Hey, there's a free plug. Put them in a box with your address and name on it and send them out. So 100% of the profits go towards supporting the content on my channel, which I think is awesome. To assemble the kit set, you'll need a pair of cutters, a couple of screwdrivers, solder, and of course a soldering iron. A multimeter is also required to adjust the voltage to your requirements at the end of assembly. When populating a printed circuit board with electronic components, it's good practice to install the smallest components first. I'll start assembly by installing the ceramic caps, resistors and diode. These ceramic caps are 1 microfarad and they are installed on the board wherever you find a 1 microfarad label. After installing all the 1 microfarad caps, you can carefully flip the board over and bend the wires slightly to prevent the caps from falling out before soldering. Now we can solder the caps to the board. Be sure to use a quality flux core solder. Using a poor quality solder can at times fail to wet the connections properly, leading to failure. Now we can snip off the excess wire. Next I'll install the 100 nanofarad capacitors. These caps are the only component that does not have a label printed on the board, simply because there isn't enough room. But don't worry, finding where they go is easy. Just look for a white rectangle with two holes inside like this. I then bent the pins just like before and then soldered and trimmed the leads, which by now you'll be familiar with so I'll skip this step from now on. Next I installed the diode. Make sure you pay attention to orientation. The diode has a silver band at one end which should be lined up with the band printed on the board. When it comes to the resistors you can identify their value either by reading the colour bands but really it's easier and faster just to measure the resistance with a multimeter to determine the resistor's value like I'm doing here. So now I know this is a 10 ohm resistor. Now all I have to do is to find a 10R label on the board and install the resistor in that location. Now 
Now it's just a matter of repeating this process for the few remaining resistors. Here is the LM358 dual op amp. To correctly orientate this component, pay attention to this little circle on top. This circle should be at the same end as the notch printed on the board. Next we have three similar looking components, but all three of these components are unique so make sure not to get them mixed up. First I'll install the TL431. Looking from the top down notice how this component is shaped like a capital D. This D shape is also printed on the board so make sure to orientate the components so that they match the printing on the board. Up next is the 2N7000. followed by the LM78L05. Up next is the red and blue LEDs. Each LED has one wire that is slightly longer than the other. This wire should be installed in the hole nearest the positive symbol for each LED. Next I'll install the two trimmers. These trimmers are used to adjust the voltage and current. Up next is the 0.01 ohm shunt resistor. Make sure you use plenty of solder when soldering the shunt to the board. This is a high current component so a good solder joint is essential here. I'd also recommend flipping the board over and soldering the shunt on the top side as well. Now we can assemble the buck IC and dual shocky diode to their heat sinks using the included hardware. First take the plastic insulator and install it in the IC like this. Then insert a screw and install a thermal pad on the back of the IC. You can now install the IC onto the heatsink like this. And lastly install a nut on the back. Leave the nut loose for now as it makes lining up the pins later much easier. And repeat this process for the dual shocky diode as well. Now you can install the heatsink onto the board. Soldering the buck IC pins can be a little bit tricky. The pins are quite close together making it easy to inadvertently have solder bridge between the pins shorting them together. One trick I found useful was to trim the pins before soldering. Sit the tip of your iron on top of the pin and let the solder run down the iron onto the pin. Next to be installed was the screw terminals. When it comes to installing the large capacitors, pay attention to the white line on the side. This line should be lined up with the white half circle printed on the board where the capacitors are installed. And lastly the inductor can now be installed. With all the components installed there is one last job. On the underside of the board there are a couple exposed traces that need to be tinned with solder like this. These traces carry the high current between the input and output so doing so prevents the otherwise thin traces from overheating under heavy load. Oh, and don't forget to tighten the screws now. 
Included in the kit set is a set of M3 screws and standoffs to install in the mounting holes if you require them. And lastly, before connecting your finished buck converter up to power, give it one last visual inspection and make sure no connections have been missed or bridged with solder. If all looks good, now's the time to connect it to a power source. For the purposes of this video, I'll be powering the buck converter from my variable power supply, which is set to output 32 volts. I'll connect my meter to the output of the buck converter and adjust the voltage by turning the trimmer. Now an important aspect of any buck converter is how much voltage ripple is on the output. Ideally would like to see minimal voltage ripple. To inspect the waveform I'll use my oscilloscope. Well that's looking pretty nice. There is only 10.4 millivolts of ripple. But really the real test comes when a load is drawing current from the buck converter. To do this I'll use my resistive load tester that is currently configured to be a 2 ohm resistive load. To thoroughly evaluate the amount of voltage ripple I want to draw the maximum 8 amps of current from my buck converter. I'll use my clamp meter to measure the current and my load tester is drawing just over 8 amps of current. Perfect. Now I can inspect the waveform using my scope. With a full 8 amp load the voltage ripple is now up to 64 millivolts. Compared to before with no load obviously the ripple has increased, but all things considered 64 millivolts of ripple is still very good, especially for an 8 amp load. And how about efficiency? Well in this test setup the buck converter is consuming 137 watts of power and outputting 129 watts, which means only 6% of power has been lost. This means the converter is up to 94% efficient in this test. And what about thermal performance? With the buck converter in free air without a fan blowing any air over the heat sinks, temperatures stabilised at 70 Celsius for a 4 amp load and 116 Celsius for an 8 amp load. To keep temperatures at a manageable level, adequate ventilation should be used. And with currents above 4 amps, consider using a small fan to push air over the heat sinks. So that about wraps it up. If you want to purchase your own kit set, and also by doing so you'll be supporting the content on my channel, there'll be purchasing links down in the video's description. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.